Greetings War Thunderers, this is Longshot with you again, with a guide to flying the Heinkel 112A0 in Arcade. This video will demonstrate what the plane can do and tactics to help you fly it effectively. The plane was a prototype. Only one A0 was ever built, but unlike most prototypes it actually saw combat, used in the Spanish Civil War to attack ground targets, until it was wrecked in a landing accident. It's exactly the same design as the Hunker 112V5, but instead of two light machine guns, it mounts a whopping great 20mm flat cannon in the propeller hub. As you can see, its wings are huge, they seem oversized for the plane in fact, and logically that means a low wing loading and lots of lift, but until recently you wouldn't have known that from flying it in War Thunder as it handled much more like a Focke Wulf 190, but not anymore. Patch 1.51 gave this plane a new flight model, so let's see how it handles now. Its roll rate's mediocre, probably similar to a Spitfire's. Into a horizontal turn to test its elevators and the lift from its wings, and that is one tight turning circle. It easily overlaps its smoke trail. This baby can really turn now. But down at Tier 1 there's plenty of planes capable of turning like this, and it's not al alone it's not enough to defeat biplanes. To do that you need a decent rudder and the ability to perform a climbing spiral. So, I'm going to hold the left rudder and up elevator together, and tap the right roll key to stop the plane from tipping over. Its initial climb is very steep and it quickly sheds its speed, but watch what happens now that the plane slowed right down. It just keeps climbing, and climbing, and climbing, with no loss of turning ability either. It even climbs at 100% power once the WEP runs out, and that is quite extraordinary. I know it's arcade, where all flight models are boosted, but even for arcade the term UFO springs to mind. Anyway, if any realistic battles uh, players are watching, it can turn extremely well with its RB flight model, but no, it can't spiral climb like this. After about half a turn, your speed drops into the mid-150s. You'll be close to stalling, and you'll have to nose the plane over. Well, I could just keep uh, spiral climbing forever, but I must press on. Let's look at its handling at high speed. Its slow roll speed doesn't really get much slower, and while its response to the mouse cursor is a little sluggish, it tracks to the sides without wanting to lift the nose, and that's pretty good. High speed handling like this would be above average on many Tier 3 and 4 planes. For a Tier 1 plane, it's brilliant. Better than LAGS, the BF-110, and Heiko 112B series. With its old flight model, high speed boom and zoom was the A0's strength. In fact, with its centerline cannon, it was known as a poor man's I-301, and it can still boom and zoom, but now it can dogfight as well. Is there anything this plane can't do? Yes, it's a poor climber. It's decent if you keep the climb angle shallow, as I'm doing here, but a steep climb will drain its speed in a heartbeat. OK, so how have I been using this thing in a battle? Well, firstly, I've been tearing it up a little, flying it with both the BF-110 and 112B0 in the lineup, but leading with the A0. And I'm doing this because the A0 is, in my opinion, the best plane of the three right now, and this way I have decent backups if needed. So I'm also using the default ammo belt, which has more high explosive than the others, though with all the belts I do experience a lot of sparkling with this cannon. I climb it around 230 to 240 kilometers an hour. Doesn't really matter what speed you climb at though, it's not going to gain altitude very quickly, and in most battles you won't need much. But this is an air domination battle, and I've chosen to climb flying sideways to the zone, but even so I'm about to be intercepted by a P-36. Now Hawks are excellent dogfighters, with a tight turning radius and good low speed handling. And when it's obvious that this guy's heading for me, I'm going to turn to face him. I'll squeeze off a few rounds and then snap roll. Remember your pilot has no protection, it's not worth holding head-ons in an A-0. And into the snap roll. OK, let's put the plane's new turning ability to the test, using both up elevator and left rudder, and yes, I'm straight into a climbing spiral, while the Hawk has turned horizontally. Just like that, I have an altitude advantage, and I can keep the climbing spiral going while he loses speed trying to get to me. His plane gets sluggish while mine does not, and as he approaches stall speed, well, I have him on toast. And because he's stalled, I have plenty of time to finish him off. Could the old A0 have done that? I seriously doubt it. So now I'm in control of what passes for high altitude in a low tier arcade game, and I can exploit it with some boom and zoom attacks. I started off going for a climbing buffalo here, but then he dived to join the kill train on the tail of this poor Dauntless, and they've all got tunnel vision, so I followed through with the attack. 
there's more tempting targets there. But I'm going to zoom climb because we're very close to the enemy fighter spawn, and the battle has a long way to go. And look at that energy retention on the shallow zoom climb. There was a steady stream of fighters attempting to climb up, and that gave me plenty of boom and zoom practice. Two climbers here, the lag ahead of it, and the buffalo that the lag's diving away. I was going, I'm diving at the buffalo first, I was going to carry on toward the lag. Anyway, this plane is a very steady gun platform, hardly any recoil on the cannon. Now I'm switching to the SPD, which has a hurricane on its tail, but the cane sets him alight just so I open fire, and so I won't steal his kill. Once again, look at my speed in a shallow zoom climb. Once you have an altitude advantage, this plane really is a great boom and zoomer. This P-36 had climbed out the back while I was busy elsewhere. Looks to me like he's low on speed, so I'm going for a pilot kill, but no luck this time. Looping immediately, and geez, this plane loops well. And what do I see but another stalled out plane? He never stood a chance. A pea shooter had also climbed. If the Hawk was the main course, this one's dessert. No need to rush here, just get nice and close, and make no mistake. Too easy. Okay, so far I've kept things pretty simple, apart from the early dogfight with the Hawk, but don't worry, as I usually do, I'll save the most interesting stuff for last. This next engagement starts with a simple boom and zoom on another climbing P-36, and then I'll move on toward a lag that are climbed in the middle of the zone. Notice how I often need to hold a stream of cannon shells on the target for several seconds. While occasionally I get a quick kill, usually I find this cannon needs to land multiple rounds to get the job done. It's certainly not as effective as Shavax or Mark I Hispanos. Just holding the speed from the dive to close in on the lag, and I'll only lift up when I'm approaching guns range. And that's not an easy angle. I'm trying to hold the plane steady while I follow him. And now I'm going to be too close, so I have to break off. If I'd used my brain there, I would have throttled back in order to stay on his tail. And pulling up into a high yo-yo has retained my energy advantage, but I didn't need it, as I, I could have easily outturned him. And by doing that, I've given him time to dive away and escape if he wished. And there he goes, rolling over into a dive into the fur ball below. Well, there's one that got away, but there's plenty more fish in the barrel, such as another lag trying to helicopter up at me. And I take a bit of damage there, but it's nothing critical. And that's another thing worth pointing out. This plane has quite a strong damage model. It's not unusual for me to take multiple hits throughout a battle and keep on fighting. And this guy had no chance against the climbing spiral. Going back to the cannon on this plane, it has 150 rounds, which is actually very good. It takes a while to get through them as the rate of fire is fairly low, which again contributes to the time on target needed to shoot down planes. And it can be hard to work out how much you should lead the target as well. And to be honest, I'm still getting the hang of it. As I zoom climb here, I'm going to be peppered with shots from another climber, in this case a Yak-1. But the huge wings on this plane are made from solid Krupp's steel, and he'll have to do better than that if he wants to shoot me down. And like the lag before him, his Yak cannot hang with me in a climbing spiral. I thought I'd lost him as he flipped into a split S, but he obviously hasn't installed his Russian sprinkler system properly, that fire's not going to go out. By the way, look at my altitude now. It's very late in the game, and I'm right in front of their fighter spawn. I'm not shooting them as they spawn in, rather I want them to attack me, as that keeps them out of the zone, which my team is currently capping. It also gets me a steady supply of kills. This buffalo thinks he can ignore me and fly straight. I'll just have to convince him otherwise. Once again, I need quite a long volley to get the job done, and his lack of dodging certainly helped. Okay, one last uh, kill in this battle before I move on. A lag spawns in, the last player on his team, and yes he knows he's flying straight into a swarm of fighters, it's just a question of who's going to shoot him down. And my diving attack is not getting the job done. Just can't quite land a killer blow, though I do cut the tip off his wing. This isn't a scenario for throttling back, as I'd find myself in a kill train with friendly shooting through me, but I'm damned if I'm going to let someone else get the kill this time. Nice deflection shot here, just need to get the guns on target, chipping away at his Stalinwood wings, and finally off they go. So that battle I played fairly conservatively, as there was great advantage in controlling the upper altitude throughout. In T1 domination and ground strike though, you'll often find yourself alone if you climb, while all the action whirls away down at ground level. 
Climbing is usually just a prelude to low-level, high-speed boom and zoom runs. I'd climbed at the start of this domination battle and killed two bombers, and was looking to start a diving attack when I realised a Yak-1 was climbing up at me. He was already close to stalling, so I quickly run it over and set him alight. Pulled up into a zoom climb and watched as he burned out. There's plenty of other enemy fighters over there, so let's see if anyone else wants to climb. There's no need to look for diving, uh, dive looking for targets if people are going to attack me. Normally I'd be a little more cautious about looping back towards enemy fighters like this, as it left me low on speed and vulnerable, but this plane fills me with confidence. Yep, here comes a 112B0 who has no chance of hanging with me in a climbing spiral, but the 202 is another matter. I'm straight into the head-on as I can't give him the chance to get on level terms, and fortunately I managed to light him up without taking any damage. That leaves the B0, over whom I enjoy a significant energy advantage, plus I can outturn him. I should have deployed flaps and cut my throttle here, as I would have gotten a decent firing solution, instead of just clipping his tail. I'm quickly getting the upper hand in what's become a rolling scissors, and getting a nice shot at him here that only scores another hit. And with that he's had enough, and he dives away. I decide once again to climb back onto my perch and see if anyone else wants to take me on. And I've broken my shallow climbing rule and gone straight up, which absolutely kills my speed. Then I notice a P40 inbound, which given how slow I am, uh, could be very serious indeed if he has the energy to hold guns on me for any length of time. I hold the plane level and hit WEP to accelerate. I'm trying to gain speed while allowing the P40 to helicopter vertically and stall his plane. I take some damage, but once again, it's minor. And there he goes. He'll be completely out of control for several seconds. Plenty of time for me to swoop in for the kill. Except my aim's off. I just can't land my shots. If I rolled my plane to match his, I'd have given myself a much higher chance of the kill, but now the moment's passed. And while he dived away, a hurricane decided to take a turn at me. I quickly realised I didn't have the energy advantage to fly above him, so I'm meeting his head-on and avoiding with a snap roll. OK, I'm going to com commence the inevitable turn fight with, you guessed it, the climbing spiral. And straight away I'm above the hurricane, but his energy is good enough to lift up for a shot at me, which I need to duck away from. As soon as I'm past him, I'm into the climbing spiral again. And now he's struggling for speed, and can't match me in a turn either. Many players would persevere in this situation and be shot down as a result, but this hurricane pilot was wise enough to see what was happening, and quickly decided to give up and dive away. Of course I don't spend all my time fending off climbers like this. Toward the end of the battle I was at low altitude fighting for the central airfield. I'm looping after booming through the furball, then looking for a shot at these planes, trying to cap the runway. And then gradually turning to the right. My speed's pretty good, I need to keep it that way. I'm facing an incoming Chaika, bailing out of the head-on. And then I see a fast approaching Yak-1 behind me. I break up sharply and to the right. I take a few hits, but shrug them off, of course, and now I'm in a dogfight against a powerful plane with an energy advantage. Switch back to the left, back to the right again to deny him a gun solution, and now we're in a proper turn fight, which plays right into my hands. Just like that, I have a gun solution, he's a light, and like the other Yak ones, he's not going to survive the fire. At low altitude, this plane really comes into its own. It's fast, it turns brilliantly, it's tough as hell, and it comes with a central 20mm cannon. Now what more could you want? There's no point flying it conservatively down here. You want to think aggressively. Keep the plane as fast as possible and constantly move from one target to the next. As you do so, the kill count will rise, and you'll even help your team, uh, your team win battles. But more importantly, you'll have a lot of fun, which after all is what playing an arcade game is all about. Now I could easily uh, end the video here, but I thought I'd finish with a full battle on the Krimsk domination map. I've climbed after spawning and I narr narrated the action while I flew the plane. Okay, there's the Yak one down there. Looks like he's getting embroiled in a dogfight. Bunch of climbing fighters on my right. I'll head toward them. Yeah, this is looking promising. I might be able to get them with a low yo-yo attack. Just burst through, a quick shot at one of them and then out the other side. Yeah, there's four of them there, but you only live once. Okay, the Spitfire. 
Nope, he's uh, too evasive and the I-16 too. Okay, there's no point hanging around here any longer. Let's go into a dive. See if I can pick up a target here. Uncle 111 is looking good, but I'll just get a brief snapshot. Tracer flicking past tells me there's someone on my tail. So I'll just gently extend away and keep my speed high. Yep, bullets landing around me. Who have I got? An I-16, but already he's out at 550 metres and growing. So there's no point turning at this point. I'll just give him a shot at me if I do. Better just to extend out of range and then I can deal with him. Or he'll break off and I can just turn back. Okay, let's see what happens. Dropping him very quickly now. This is what I mean, this plane can really um, outrun whatever you can't outturn, though I dare say I could outturn an I-16 pretty easily. Alright, he's busy. Let's loop back. And we have a 109 above us as well. Okay, the I-16's busy. I'll switch onto the 109. It's like an F1, yes. I-16's still busy up there. I think he's been shot down, so I just keep on the F1 here. Just need a shell to land. Nope, not lining up there. Oh good, he's climbed. I've got him now. Good night. And there's something else around here as well. Ah, uh, PBY. He is going to get mugged in no time. Might as well take a shot though. Okay. I found actually that PBYs are fairly easy to drop if you hit them on the outside of the wings. If you uh, aim at the fuselage or the inner parts of the wings you can be firing at them for a long time uh, without much luck. Having said that, there's another PBY down there. Let me test the theory. Now, it's easy to say aim at the outside of the wing. It's another thing to do it and actually land your shots. I've missed most of those to the downside. Try that again. And he's sitting up for me too. Should make it easy. And I think I aimed too much to the centre of the plane then. Which is why I only got the assist. Never mind. Okay. Okay, I've got a couple of high bombers. Bunch of fighters down there. I could dive in. Let me see. I probably should wait for the 110 to come in. I don't want to dive through and then find I'm wearing a burst from him. That would not be nice. So I'll dive on the 110. No one else is. Missed the Spitfire. Okay. To make sure not to ram would be very easy to do so. Look at my speed coming out of that loop. Okay, he's down. And now run away. Oh, MiG-3 on my back. Can't run away. And a Spitfire too. They can't handle a climbing spiral, I bet. Here's the MiG. Where's the Spit? Don't know, but there's a lag here as well. Ah, oh, the Spit's off me, so it's just a lag on me now, I think. Okay, that is going to be one stalled lag right now. Good night. And who can I dive at? Spitfire, no, bad angle. I'll just dive on the A5M, why not? Hold still. Loop back over. Just gotta keep moving, keep turning. Don't fly straight. Get my speed back up. See if I can pick up one of these guys. P30, uh, it's a P26. And the Spitfire. He's ducked underneath my guns. Never mind. Okay, take a breather and extend away for a second. I shot something down. Oh, hello. Got a trailer. What is it? Just an I-15. Nothing to worry about. Okay, he's turned off. Let's head back. Once again, I want to go where the action's thickest, where I can find the most potential targets. 
So that means over here. And the A5M is holding nice and straight. Doesn't see me coming, isn't dodging. Easy target. Whoa. Right, F4F. Just slight dodging up and down, keeps my speed up. Mm, can't quite get him. Okay, what's happening? I might just climbing spiral for a second, just in case. Right, there's the F4F. Henkel might drop on the F4F again. Here we go. Look at that handling. It's just gorgeous. Come on. Nope. Okay. Oh, he went down anyway. Right. Okay, I have to take a break and reload. Might as well just into a gentle climb. Loop it over, and we're ready to go again. Into the heart of the battle. Oh, no shot there. Uh, ignore him. Carry on. I'm so fast, they'll never catch up. Hmm. Too many targets, I'm not sure which ones to go for. Indecision, indecision. I'll go for the A5M. Once again, they're not holding still. Can this dog fight with an A5M? Let's find out. Climbing spiral. Can you hang with me, A5M? Oh, Spitfire 2. Why not? Okay, where's the spit? There he is. And actually I'd have the A5M on toast, but I'm too wary about that spit. Oh, I could have shot him down. Never mind. And there's the Spitfire. The can't he can't turn with me either. He's given up. But the A5M is still hanging in there. Obviously I'm out, uh, out fighting, flying him. I easily have an energy advantage now, which I didn't start with. It's just a matter of whether I can get guns on him to finish him off. Not quite. Let's try it again. Once more into the climbing spiral. See how easily I'm out flying that plane. And A5Ms are good. They are brilliant turners. Right into a stall now. See if I can hammer head over and drop onto him. Ah. Oh, robbed by the bell. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And what more can I say than you should fly this plane? You're really missing out if you don't. Also, if you see one of these on the battlefield, treat it with respect. In fact, I'm off to fly it again now. Until my next video, I'll see you in the skies.